In that session, we are going to talk about the anatomy of the skull from different aspects, developmentally, the main points of the how to name the sutures, how to name the processes, how to look to the skull from different aspects, and from inside, we'll try to get around the skull and make it as simple as possible. Now, let's go to the adult skull and have a summary of what we will know about the adult skull. That is starting by the general features of the skull, and those are the joints. The joints are named sutures. All of them are fibrous joints. And there is two ways to name those sutures, exactly like the rest of the body. The first, which have name, named sutures, exactly like in the joints of the body, the knee, the ankle, the elbow, does not take the name of the two articulating bones. Here we'll find the sutures which does not take the name of the articulating bones. The other, this, which does not take the bones are the metopic, which we have seen it in uh, uh, dividing the, the frontal bone. The coronal suture, which between the frontal and the tuberitel, as we said, the sagittal or interparietal, the lambdoid between the mastoid, the two parietals, the terion, which is a very important suture between the frontal, the parietal, the temporal, and the sphenoid for bones. It is an edge shaped suture on the lateral side of the skull where that circle is showing here. And this is where the anterior branch of the middle meningeal artery will pass deep to that point in a bony canal. So it is very uh, common site for injury of such artery. And the asterion, the one which is meeting between the temporal, the parietal, and the occipital bones on the lateral side of the skull. So that's how we name the joints. The other way of naming is by the name of the two articulating bones, exactly like as I said in the body. One of the examples is the frontozygomatic suture between the frontal and the zygomatic bone takes the name of the two bones. That's the one here. The other uh, feature in general is the points, and these points are important to locate the structures inside the skull, a surface marking. Those are the nasion, which is the root of the nose, the glabella, which lies between the two superciliary arches, the brigma, between the coronal and the sagittal sutures, the lambda, between the, uh, uh, the sagittal and the lambdoid suture, the enion, which is the center of the external occipital protuberance, and the terion, which we said it is an important one for its relation. The asterion is the same suture which, as we said, between the three bones, the parietal, the occipital, and the uh, the temporal bone. This, the general features, the third part is the normas, how to know the, the normas how when you are looking to the skull. So there is norma frontalis, looking from the front here, that is the norma frontalis. Norma lateralis, looking from the lateral side. Norma verticalis, looking from above. Norma occipitalis, looking from the back. Norma bizalis externa, from the base of the skull. And norma bizalis interna, that is the cranial cavity. That is the second or the other general feature. The processes of the skull are named in that way according to the name of the bone going to articulate with. The name of that process which comes, the example here is the timbral, from the timbral bone 
to articulate with the zygomatic bone, we call it zygomatic bronze of the timber. It is named by the name where it is going to articulate with. That is the goes on. That is the one here. That is the timbral, I mean the zygomatic process of the timbral bone. This one will be the timbral process of the zygomatic. This is the zygomatic of the timber, and so on. That is the maxillary going to the zygomatic, so the zygomatic process of the maxilla. And this is the maxillary process of the zygoma, and so on. That's how we name the processes of the skull. That's part of the general features again. Now, let's look to the main points which you can see when it comes to the norma frontalis, when we are looking from the front. That is the glabella, the one which we set between the two supercellular arches. That is the frontal bone here. That is the maxillary bone. That is the zygomatic bone here. That is the mental protuberance, bulging in the middle of the mandible, anterior aspect. That is the ramus of the mandible, and that is the body of the mandible. That is the supraorbital foramen or notch, usually foramen. Supratrochular foramen or notch, again, usually notch. That is the lacrimal bone on the medial side of the orbit, the lacrimal bone. That is the nasal bone, which forms the part of the roof of the nose. That is the nasion, which we said at the root of the nose. That is the mental foramen here, which is a, uh, in the manual for the mental nerve and vessels. Looking from the normal lateralis here, that is the frontal bone, that is the parietal bone, that is the occipital bone, that is the temporal bone, that is the maxilla, that is the zygomatic, and that is the sphenoid, that is the mandible over here. When you look from inside for the same bones, that is the frontal, that is the parietal, that is the occipital, that is the temporal, that is the sphenoid in blue, that is the palatine in yellow, here, that is the ethmoid bone here, that is the inferior nasal conica, which is a separate bone, and this is the maxillary bone here, and this is the mandible over here. That's when we look from the lateral side of the open skull. Looking from the lateral side for the normal lateralis, that's what we can see here. The zygomatic bone, the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, and the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, as I told you. The occipital bone is here the most posterior one, the external occipital protuberance, the bulging one, the center of it is the inion, as we said earlier, mastoid process, in this one, the frontal bone is here, the parietal, the frontal process of the maxilla, that is the glabella here, the superior tuberal line, that is the terion, the H-shaped suture, which we refer to between the temporal, the frontal, the parietal, and this is the greater wing of the sphenoid. That is the terion. That is not a single point, as we said, but an area where the frontal, parietal, squamous part of temporal, and the greater wing will meet each other. Looking from the back, the norma occipitalis. That is what we call the norma occipitalis here. We can see those features. We can see the external occipital protuberance, the bulging one you can feel it on yourself, in the middle of the back of the skull. That is the one here. Then three lines come out from that, of that occipital bone, the highest nuchal line, 
the inferior nuchal line and the superior nuchal line. That is the occipital bone here. And that is the superior nuchal line, very prominent on the right side here. That is, of course, the foramen magnum here. We can see it. That is the foramen magnum here. That is the occipital condyles here, can be seen. And the parts of the occipital bone will be studied later. That is the exterior occipital crest here. That is the exterior occipital crest, this one here. And this one in line drawn here. Looking from the basal surface of the skull, which you get norma bizalis externa, we can see that view. The features here are many. We'll try to get summary of the most important part. That is the incisive fossa. That is the median palatine or intermaxillary suture. That is the horizontal plate of the uh, palatine bone here. That is the posterior nasal spine. That is the posterior aperture of the nose, the coni, uh, the shonia. That is the sphenoid or scaphoid fossa. That's what we call it the scaphoid fossa here. And that scaphoid fossa is actually the posterior border of the medial the regard process will be divided into two parts to hold or to be occupied by the uh, stachyon tube. So sometimes, or better to be named, the tubal fossa. So here lies the uh, cartilaginous part of the stachyon tube. The apex of the pitorous part of the temporal bone is here. That is the apex here of the pitorous part of the temporal bone here. And here, and that is the carotid canal which traverses the pituitary part of the temporal bone to come out from the upper end of the foramen lacerum. This is the foramen lacerum here. That is the articular tubercle here, which prevent anterior dislocation of the mandible. That is the foramen lacerum which we have mentioned. To continue on the basalis externa. You can see the trigod hamulus, that is the trigod hamulus here and here, but it's more clear over here. If we tried to enlarge the, uh, the area here, that trigod process will be, or trigod hamulus will be uh, clear, more clear. The lateral trigoid plate is this one, that is the lateral trigoid plate here, and here, that is the lateral trigoid plate. And this is the medial trigoid plate, which, as we said, divides the posterior border into two to present the tubal fossa or the scaphoid fossa. The spine of the sphenoid is this one, which the uh, uh, foramen spinosa is very clear, very, very near to it here. That is the spine. That is the external occipital crest, which you have seen with the occipital. That is the foramen oval. That is the foramen spinosum. That is the mandibular fossa, which holds the head of the mandible here. That is the jugular foramen for the internal jugular vein and other structures. That is the mastoid process. Still on the norma bizalis externa, where there's a lot of structures you can see. That is the zygomatic arch. That is the squamotympanic fissure in the floor of the mandibular fossa, which gives exit to the chordotympani branch of the facial nerve. That is the tympanic part of the temporal bone here, which surrounds the or locate the external terminators. That is the mastoid foramen. That is the foramen magnum. That is the external occipital protuberance. 
that is the mastoid notch, which will give origin to the posterior bill of digastric. That is the occipital condyles on each side of the foramen magnum, one here and one here, articulating with the first cervical vertebra. That is the thylomastoid foramen for the facial nerve exit. When we come now to the internal, the norma basalis interna from inside the skull, the cranial cavity, we can see those features. The frontal sinus here. The foramen cecum is here. We'll come to a slide or a presentation where we'll mention all the structure passing on all the foramen of the skull. We are not going to deal with them here. So that is the foramen cecum. That's the crestagalli, the upper part of the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid bone. That is the cribriform plate of ethmoid. That is the uh, pre chiasmatic groove which hold the optic chiasma here. That is the lesser wing of the sphenoid, which border the posterior limit of the anterior cranial fossa. That is the greater wing of the sphenoid, a very large part of the middle cranial fossa. That is the carotid groove for the internal carotid artery within the cavernous sinus. That is the orbital plate of the frontal bone here, forming the roof of the orbit. That is the frontal crest here, still on the interna, basalis. That is the tuberculum thylly. And that is the, the particular fossa. And that is the dorsum thylly, which surround the pituitary gland. That is the anterior clinoid process, giving attachment to the anterior free border of the tentorium cerebelli. And that is the posterior clinoid process for the attached border, the anterior for the free border, and the posterior for the attached border. That is the groove for the superior petrosal sinus, and that is the groove for the inferior petrosal sinus along the petrous part. That is the tegment tympani on the lateral side of the arcuate eminence. That is the clavus of the skull, the ascending part of the skull, fusion of the body of the sphenoid and the basal occiput. Still inside, we have the groove for the middle meningeal artery, <clears throat> that is the posterior branch. The anterior branch should be over here, close to the inner aspect of the tibia. The occipital bone, that is the cerebellar fossa, where the cerebellum will be lying. That is the groove for the sigmoid sinus. And that is the bitterous part of the temporal bone. That is the arcuate eminence, which said it is medial to the tegment tympani. This tegment tympani is the roof of the middle ear. At first, it is formed of a cartilaginous part, very thin. That's why touch media may be of danger of developing a meningitis in childhood. So that is the, what to call it, the uh, tegment tympani. And this tegment tympani will sit in the base of the skull again as, as it protect, projects from the squamotympanic fissure. That is the groove for the transverse sinus, which will continue to form the sigmoid. That is the interoccipital protuberance. That is the trigeminal impression, which lies or include the trigeminal ganglion. Still inside, we have the foramen cecum. We have the optic canal. We have the foramen rotunda. We have the foramen oval. We have the foramen spinosum. The foramen lacerum in this one. The internal acoustic meatus is this one. The jugular foramen is here. And the foramen magnum is here. That is the minute foramen of the skull.